There's a moment in your bones when, when the fight takes over. Blood is running, heart is pumping as the battle gets closer. They can say what they want now. Cause we'll be screaming now. Sobrang laki ng tulong na magkaroon ng main shot caller sa team. Kasi last split, uh, nahirapan ako maglaro mechanically kasi kailangan ko magsalita habang gumagalaw. So, sa ngayon thankful ako kasi may matalino kaming shot caller. Sa last game namin, ako pa rin maglalaro. Pero tingin ko sa playoffs, uh, tigi sa kami ni EXO. Miyari, pasalamat kayo. Andiyan si Shana. Kaya 50% lang ng last kong gagamitin ko para sa kanya. <laughs> well, well said by Hamas, one of the subs of Mineski. But we want to welcome you back to the Backus Pro Gaming Series Break Split. My name is Volkan, with me is Gisto. We are entering the last week of the group stages. Yeah, and gaya nga na sinabi mo, para sa mga nanonood dyan, ito na last week ng PGS bago tayo umabot dun sa playoffs. And for both of these teams, there are some things at stake here for Mineski. If they're able to pick up 2-0 in this match, I believe they will lock in for a seed. But I'm pretty sure it's... Uh, Mineski will head on to the playoff stage. And at this week, it's very crucial for the bottom four because it's still anyone's game. We can have almost a triple tiebreaker. We can also have a four-way stand. Oh, no, or who knows? We can actually have a very interesting standings where we would see a lot of ties. Yeah, and Gaya na sinabi mo, Vulcan, in the bottom four part here, there's still a lot of scenarios where all these teams would actually tie up with each other. And Yun talaga yung pwede magbago ng scenario ng PGS as we move on to the playoff stage. But going back to what we said about Mineski, they're currently sitting at the top spot. And for Mineski, as you said, just oh nga, they're gonna make it to the playoffs. So at this point, it's a matter of fighting for seeding. And if ever Mineski, if they do get a point and they will be on the top of their game, TNT Pro Team will have at least, I think, no chances if ever Mineski gets a 2 0. Because they're gonna get two, three points. If it's 2 0, make it 18. And for TNT Pro Team, even if they sweep, it'll be just three points, which is 16. Yeah, but in the event, though, that Barsi X Reach Esports are able to beat Mineski really, that means that TNT would have a chance of getting that uh, first spot away from Mineski. You know, this is what I like about the last week of the group stages. As we keep hyping it on throughout from the first week until the last week, it's getting interesting and more interesting. And we saw how the growth of BRE from the bottom, now seeing at the fifth to fourth, nearing in that side, we're seeing great improvement, not just from BRE. We're seeing it from Laga Esports, where they have a chance to make it to playoffs. But the question on everyone's mind is, how can BRE, how can they handle Mineski? Yeah, alam mo gusto ko yung sinabi mo na throughout the PGS, people were sort of doubting BRE. Some people had them pegged like they're gonna be a 7th to 8th place team, but right now they're challenging for playoffs. So I really like the point that you pointed out where BRE have been improving throughout the PGS. And I think part of the reason is their change up in roster where midway they introduced Arda in the AD carry position. And I think he really helped that team take that next step forward by making them play a bit more comfortable. I mean, Arde was the player who played with BRE when it came to the build of his finest. That's why Shana was a bit more comfortable. But knowing the uh, play player match run done right now for our first match, which would be Mineski versus BRE, followed by our match two, which would be the defending champions, Team Manila Eagles versus Naga Esports. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that second match. But let's go back and talk about the players from Mineski and BRE today. And one matchup I'd like to highlight really is in the top lane, Kaigu versus Lando. Of course, Lando did play in the PGS before for TNC, so he has a lot of experience. And I think 
that could be one of the factors that could affect the matchup versus Kaigo. And remember how Lado, he loves to be on the split coaching champion, like uh, Camille or Trundle or Fiora. So kind of the same pull in a sense with Kaigo. Not that similar, but in a way, the playstyle is kind of similar to Kaigo. But for the patch right now for our PGS, uh, week 7, day 1, we will be running the patch 8.4, which in my opinion, has a lot of changes when it comes to the mid lane itemization. Yeah, of course, with the introduction of these new items, such as the Spellbinder and the new um, revamped Morelonomicon, the mid lane um, champions have been affected a lot by this, and some of the meta champions, such as the Azir, the Zoe, have fallen out of meta, and it's given a chance for these Mana hungry champions, which is the rise in the Cassiopeia, to come back into the meta. I wouldn't be surprised to see the mid laners pick up champions such as those today. And not just that, we can also expect for Almineski's side. We know Hamas, who have played uh, jungle, has played support, has played countless roles, even the mid lane. So that adaptability, I wonder how Hamas can actually sub in, in the mid lane, knowing that his pull kind of. We have yet to see a broad pull from Hamas being that this is his first split playing in the mid lane. But on to the drafting phase four, Minaski versus BRE. Yeah, let's see what both of these teams decide to bring onto the rift as we head on to pick and ban Vulcan. Like you said, so far the opening bans pretty standard here from Minaski, banning out key champions that BRE's players perform on, mostly target bans from Minaski. None of these are really big power picks, but like we mentioned, Azir not that great in the current man. I don't think he's one of the strongest minions, but Mineski seem to think otherwise. Exosen is very comfortable on this champion. They will be picking it out for their first pick. Now, BRE are hovering over the Nunu, which we've seen XDXP perform on beautifully. And when it comes to the players who are playing in this first match of Game 1, we are seeing Exo on the mid lane and Hamas subbing in for June, playing in the jungle. Whereas for BRE, it will not be Shanna playing with Ardai, it will be Aptung subbing in for the support role. Yeah, and that's a really tough position for BRE to be in because Abdong here is practically auto-filled. He's a he plays mid laner. He plays mid lane, but now he has to fill in support. The synergy, and we mentioned that um, Shan has been more comfortable with Ardite. Does that affect Abdong as well? It's kind of curious. It's also a risk that BRE is facing right now because we are talking about the last per, last match for BRE at the week seven. If they try and take one point, they can somehow make it or force a tie. Mm -hmm. But for BRE's position, it's a very difficult spot. But now something in up down. Let's see how he can perform. And let's hope that this is a change or this is a, this is a sub that maybe BRE needs to face against Mineski. Yeah, and now BRE, they need an AD carry to lock in here. And Vayne is an Ardai champion. He does play Vayne. And this works very well with the Nunu as well. The Nunu will just be able to constantly blood ball and really buff up that Vayne. But Looks like the response from Mineski will be this Tomkin already locked in for TJ and that will allow their bot lane to play extra aggressive knowing that they can get away if they are in trouble using the Devourer from the Tomkin. And not just from that, a lot of CC, a lot of focus can immediately be removed from the virus. So that will be a pickup from Mineski. They will be taking the Tomkin, but knowing that for Mineski, they still have Kaigus Gangplank. Right now in the patch 8.4, the mana in the power lane has been increased from 40 to 60, but it doesn't change the fact that Gangplank is a late-scale game uh, game champion. Yeah, I, like you mentioned, Gangplank was nerfed, but I think the nerfs were justified because Gangplank is a late-scaling champion, so he shouldn't have that much bully potential in lane. So he will be having a bit of a hard time here, considering that Kled is a very lane-bully sort of champion. So Kaigu needs to be a bit careful in top lane, but if he's able to scale, I think... The scaling is just all in favor of Mineski in this one. And I'm more scared about the fact that, yes, we're talking about the Gangplank and the Kled, but the focus is on to this Kha'Zix right in the patch 8.4, which is going to raise red flags all throughout because that is a jungler, that's an assassin type, and we're talking about BRE, XDXP on a Nunu. Well, XDXP's role in this game is basically be the utility for his team. He needs to buff up Ardai. Objective he control too. Yeah, and the objective control as well. It's very difficult to steal a neutral objective such as Baron or Dragon versus a Nunu Smite Consume. Very, very useful for securing this with that at least 2,000 true damage. So XDXP has his role out here cut out for him. And yeah, let's see. Can he perform to what his team needs? I want to see where PRE can really implement this competition because we're talking about Abdom playing in this first game. 
and we're seeing a Brom great disengage even if the Kazix goes in they have the glacial fissure but I'm more worried about the fact that in the mid lane we are talking about a patch where the itemization is completely different. Morello is not anymore, let's say, the mana go-to item. It's now Lost Chapter. Now it's Lost Chapter. You would see that on Ari. You would see that on, let's say, Azir. But Azir, he kind of goes for this hybrid where he goes for the attack speed and he also needs mana. Yeah, I mean, for Azir, if you run the mana flow bad and the presence of mind in your runes, I think you can get past the mana problems fairly easily. You still rush an Astro Speed and you'll be fine. As for the mid lane here, Haim is playing this Ari, and I think one of the new items, the Spellbinder, is a very, very effective item in Ari. It does give her the tools that she needs. I mean, bonus movement speed to close the gap, and then bonus AP for even more burst damage. Those are things that Ari really likes. And not to mention the Nunus Blood Point gives moving speed and extra ability power. But, Gisto, I think we are ready to load onto the ref. This is going to be match one, game one of Mineski on the blue side versus BRE on the red side. We are live on Facebook, we are live on YouTube. Let us know who you are rooting for. Hashtag Mineskiwin or hashtag BRE win. Because when it comes to the last week of the group stages in the Pro Gaming Series, you want to make it good. Yeah, you definitely want to make it good. And for both of these teams in this first matchup, there's a lot on the line here because for Mineski, it's the seeding once you head on to playoffs. And for Barca X Rage Esports, if they're able to secure points here, even with just one game, that means they can steer clear of the other teams trying to catch up to them. And they'd be very happy to be in the playoffs in their first split in the PGS. That's an achievement for a new team. And that's what everyone wants. Because when you're talking about this new format, moving on to the top six teams right now for the playoff stage, you want to make it there. And it's easier to try and... If you made it to the playoff stage, you can try and work your improvements going into the playoff stage. Let's say you didn't do so well in the group stages. What did you do wrong? You can put that in mind the mentality entering the playoff stage. Yeah, I really like that you pointed out where the longer your season goes, the more you can apply the improvements that you have been going through throughout the split. But right now, BRE, medyo mahirap yung position nila because they aren't playing with their starting support. Shanna is not in this game. It's actually Abdog starting out here. So, ang tanong dito, gano kagaling mag-support itong sub-mid laner ng Barca x ray Sports? Well, you didn't hear Hamas that. The 50% yung, yung interview ni Hamas, ano yun? Pista. Alam ko yung dulo ng interview ni Hamas, sinabi niya eh, BR, eh, and I quote, BRE, pasalamat kayo, nakasama niya si Shana, kasi 50% ang lalakas ko gagamitin ko. Wala si Shana ngayon. Kaso wala si Shana dito. 100% lang kasi ni Nasuke. Well, to be fair, Volkan, sinabi niya kung kasama si Shana, 50% 50 lang daw, di ba? Hindi na naman niya sinabi 100% kung wala si Shana. That's, that's a fair point, right? That's a fair point, but when it comes to the support dynamic with Arda and Aptong, this is going to be interesting, but at least he is on a Brom. Kinda does well with a Vayne. I mean, if you get a free stun, you give a free CC to a Vayne, that's the dream set. Yeah, I mean, Brom is pretty straightforward to play as a support, but the mindset as well, you are an auto-filled mid, mid laner practically, so there might be some stuff such as warding, roaming that won't show as well as if it was a true support playing. But yeah, let's wait and see because it is still fairly early in the game. And when it comes to, let's say, the fill-in, it's yes. You have to pick, but do you have the necessary playstyle to go with it? And this is what we want to see from BRE. They're the teams who improve moving into the group stages. Yeah, and speaking of playstyles, looking at the bot lane matchup here, it's really going to be dictated by the Varus and Top Kench because they have more pushing power compared to a Vayne Brom. The Varus will have more range than the Vayne, so that Gary will always be able to bully Ardai if Ardai steps too far forward. So I think this is a benefit for BRE because they don't need to perform as much in the bot lane, but look yeah. at that. Hamas, clever rotation going to the Raptors over that wall, forcing the flash from Jaime. Yeah, but look at the immediate response by Jaime. That was so much respect given to the damage that they could have um, dealt to him. He immediately flashes away, though. XDXP, he has been spotted by a ward here. Can Kaigo get away? Kaigo does have the scurvy, so he will try and cleanse it out. He does see XDXP. There's a slow, but we're not seeing any more aggression coming from BRE. They won't commit because that is a very hard gap to kill. Yeah, he was. He did spot XDXP on a warden, given that it is a Nunu, not that enough slows yet. 
your snowball at rank 1 doesn't slow that much and you really won't be able to catch up on the gangplank but yeah looking back here in the bot lane it's going very passively for Barca Extra Rage Esports and I think this benefits them because they'd want the vein to scale towards the late game that is Vayne's win conditions he doesn't necessarily need to win the lane all she really needs is to get the items get the gold get the experience and get there safely not too far behind us Jaime has no flash no flash low on mana he tries to get away with the orb and will be forced to take it, take it down by Mineski that will be the first blood going to Hamas. yeah well executed gank by the jungler of Mineski because he knew that Jaime did not have flash from that previous gank and that's what you need to do as a jungler you need to punish these flashes when they are down it doesn't matter if you only come into lane and then burn them yeah they'll play a bit more passively but it's great if you're able to punish the flashless members so great rotation by Mineski's jungler this is what you expect from a team who has been pegged and throughout this split as one of the best teams the best teams right now rank one first seed for now and they want to establish it. They want to show all of us that, hey, we are, we are a new improved team and we are showing it. Yeah, and speaking of showing stuff, I mean, Hamas has been playing quite a bit of roles throughout the split for Mineski. He did play mid lane. One week he also played top lane, filled in for Kaigo. Now he's filling in for Jun in the jungle. And he's still showing his adaptability as a player. He's still very, very proactive on this Kha'Zix. And given that he has ga been ganking more, he's actually been keeping up in CS compared to Anunu. That's great improvement. You're, you're talking about from Hamas. And I think it shows when you're playing with Vineski. Remember the interview he said. He's thankful he's improving each day. And the results are showing. And this is what you expect. The mentality of a pro player. Yeah, and looking back at... You mentioned Hamas' interview where he's been playing more comfortably now that they have a main shot caller. Oh. I think it shows here. He is a bit caught out though. Flashback so next He gets a slow there. Can Lando make it there? He does flash in. That will be a kill for Lando. So Hamas was cut off in the river. Yeah, and I like the decisiveness from BR either. They knew that even if Kaigu roamed down there, he wouldn't have been able to help his flashless Kha'Zix. So smart read by BRE. They do the same thing that Mineski did earlier. They know a champion does not have flash. They do the right thing. They punish it while it is down. This is really a mind game we're seeing here. I mean, when the summoners are on cooldown, expect some aggression from the jungler or some ganks or rotations. So, at this point, we're seeing players here keeping track of the summoner cooldown, playing around it. Yeah, and you mentioned keeping track, Wilton. And what this reminds me of is we are in patch 8.4. The tracker's knife jungle item has been removed. So, you see here both junglers have picked up the... Uh, challenging smite they're going for more damage I mean, damage and resistances but with the trackers knife removed that means that both of these champions will have with generally in pro play you'd see them pick up that item for more wards more vision control but now that there's it has been removed the vision in the early game won't be as much as compared to previous patches and but i think that really impacts the game yeah and this even though that does impact the game this isn't stopping Vinesky for those aggressive Invades, SXP, trying to close in on the TG, but it's kind of scared. I mean, you're seeing EXO responding there, you just back off. Yeah, and I think that's the smart place to invade if you're Mineski. Hamas tried to invade the top side of the map earlier, but given that Lando was the one pushing in Kaigu, he wasn't, Kaigu wasn't able to help him yet. Lando was just able to collapse earlier though. Speaking of Lando, he needs to be careful here. Kaigu can all in him. All in. He does have the flash and the cannon barrage. So Lando, he does expect maybe Hamas is here or he may rotate to the top. But in the end, Lando is still in, not in the clear zone. He should be very careful. I yeah, just need a bit more to remount onto um, Skarl. Onto Skarl. Kled's lonely at the moment. Top lane is a lonely, lonely land. And I think <laughs> Kled's very happy to get the remount as Exo will be picking up his blue buff. Or not. Oh, what happened there? I... I think that was the red buff ticking from Hamas. So very unfortunate for Exo. Azir, like we mentioned, will not be building into the instant loss chapter. See here, he has the stinger. So looks like Exo needs to rely on that blue buff in the early game. So very tough choice there. I think soon he will be forced to recall here. I mean, we're talking about a patch where right now in the mid lane, it's all about mana. To stay in the lane, but now you're talking about an Azir who is kind of forced to build into a Nasher's Tooth early. 
no more mana, and that's very difficult for an Azir. I mean, I think Azir as a mid laner, oh, he does have the mana flow ban at least. Yeah, I think he's still vi he's still viable as a mid laner. He isn't completely out of the meta. He does provide some things that teams would want, such as late game DPS, disengage with his ultimate, a pseudo engage as well if he goes for this Purima shuffle. But yeah, since the, the itemization in the mid lane has been heavily reliant on Lost Chapter being your first item, and since Azir really doesn't rush that item, he has been affected a bit. But I oh. definitely think that he's still viable, as EG is just bullying Biari, trying to delay the recall. Maybe matak patakot lang. Ako yung tunay na support. Abdong ano mid laner kay, but kaya nito mga tipong garon. I mean, he does have That's too much aggression, but yeah. For TG to establish his aggression as a support. I mean, we've been seeing how TG plays with Gary, one of the aggressive bot lane duos entering the spring split. And right on top of that, you're talking about the best team in the PGS, which is Mineski. But for BRE, the improvement that we saw throughout the group stages, and now they're actually holding their ground for now against Mineski. This is what we want to look out for for BRE. They're showing it to us and now trying to take at least maybe one point or potentially which can really change the standings, take away a 2-0, who knows? Yeah, I mean, you mentioned that BRE could potentially take a 2-0, no matter how unlikely that is, the game isn't um, near to ending yet, so we really can't tell at this point, but yeah, like you mentioned, BRE has been improving a lot, but Jaime's in trouble. Jaime does have the ultimate, he does have the spirit rush, he's trying to kite out of Hamas, he is low, X the X, we will flash over that wall, but Exo will get the return kill, but this will end in a 2-1 trade. Yeah, a double kill for the new, but action isn't stopping a stop oh, lane. Oh, very close call there. That would be a really bad Q. If it had landed, that would have been a great setup for Lando. Yeah, I'm looking back at the mid lane skirmish though. It's 2v2 between the mid and jungler, and I think that was a slight miscalculation by Mineski. He disrespected the mobility that Ari has, and the damage just wasn't there yet. Hamas was not able to burst down the Ari instantly, and Taime bought enough time for XDXP to get in. Exo though was forced to flash forward just to secure the kill, and that meant that Lil Nunu could just chase him down. So that was a good trade for BRE. Let's see, can they keep this small bit of momentum that they have? It's a matter of using the small pieces left on the ground and trying to build something on it. And you're talking about Hyamus Ari, so expect that in the late game, he's great at flanking the lines, go to the back line. He needs to penetrate the defense of Mineski, go for the high priority targets, which is the Varus or the Azir. But that's very difficult because TG's job is to deny that. Yeah, especially versus Mineski, a top tier team in the PGS for so long now. You definitely want to get all the advantages you can get, no matter how small. It's very critical that you get these small edges here and there if you want to have a chance to compete with arguably the best team in the PGS. But we are either holding the ground here. We're seeing in the itemization, Ardai picks up the BF Sword, wants to match the, match the damage coming from this Varus. And not to mention, it's kind of hard for this Vayne to farm. The range of the Varus with the Piercing Arrow really zones him out. I mean, Abton can do so much, but he cannot really control the lane. Here. Yeah, Lando though, he's a bit of... He's constantly being harassed here by Kaigo and he isn't getting the good part of these trades. It looks no like, part. despite the gangbang nerfs, Kaigo actually ulted somewhere. I wonder where that went though. But yeah, looking back, regardless of the gangplank nerfs, he's still been able to hold his own versus a lane bully such as Kled. So this is a good sign for Mineski moving forward. The Talibar play by Lando with the Cannon Mirage trying to slow down the movements of PRE kind of failed in a sense because they were able to take down TG in the bot lane but in response Mineski, Hames is trying to trade things off for the Rift Harrow but it would be BRE taking away the Infernal Drake. Wait, can they contest this? No, I don't think the members of BRE are in any position to contest this Rift Harrow so I think this will definitely go over to Mineski but like you mentioned we are Eve. Oh, XDX is already here. But yeah, looking back, they were able to pick up a kill on the Tom Kench. And they were able to transition that into an Infernal Jake, which their team really, really likes. And like we mentioned, you want to get all the bet, all these small advantages you can versus Mineski. I mean, during the draft, and you see uh, Nazir. You were trying to take away that Nazir with the Nunu. But let's look at the breakdown of the replay in the bot lane. Yeah, this is actually smart that. Land teleported in and they all focus the damage onto the Tom Kench because the moment that he burns the Devourer onto Gary, there's really no reason to over chase for the Varus. You can just lock down the Tom Kench because 
Tom Ken just have any skips aside from Flash, so they knew it was down. They all focused onto the Tom Con Tom Kench. And despite all of that being burned, I mean, it did transition into that Infernal Drix. So I think that was worth for Biari. I mean, it was kind of smart for Biari to try to take away the Nunu. You see an Azir. You don't want to give a Nunu and an Azir in the same team. And now we're seeing a Nunu paired with an, with an Ari. Can somehow work the same way because Ari needs the mobility. Ari also gets the ability power buff from the Blood Boil. And if ever Hyman does pick up the Spell Binder, that is gonna... <laughs> like a truck. Yeah, I think Jaime is definitely happy that he has the utility from XDXP, but for the most part, Vulcan, I think the member from BRE that will benefit the most from this Nunu's Blood Ball is Ardai on this vein because, you know, Vayne loves attack speed. The more you can proc your Silver Balls, the more true damage. And looking at Mineski's comp, there's no true tank. Once this Vayne gets her core item, such as the Infinity Edge, the Static Shiv, She's just gonna destroy you because you have no way of dealing with her unless you're able to instantly assassinate her before the fight even starts. There is no real frontline from Mineski's comp. So if they let Ardai scale and are not able to take him down, that could be the window that we are in if they want to take down Mineski. And that window is, window is very plausible for BRE because when you look at BRE's comp, you're seeing a solid tank, you're seeing the Braum, you're seeing like the Clan and the Nunu to try be in the front line. But XTX will try and kite maybe for Aridai when the fight does happen with the Blood Boil. But wait, the Horns have come. We're seeing ah, Lando will take towards the mid lane. He gets pushed by the Divine. Barrage is there, he gets slow, gets one hit, gets dismounted. XTX is here. Just in case Mineski wants to try something risky, but he showed himself. Can it from in the bot lane? Arda immediately focuses on to Gary. It'll be a 1v1 trade, but in the end, the support will fall down. Teleport does get cancelled. Here comes X XP. Where's the blood? Well, no, they will not commit to the fight. In the mid lane, the Rift Herald is being summoned here, and that's going to be Hyman. Forced to back away. Kind of low on health. He will be not, he won't be able to defend this one. Forced to give. The first turret of the game to Mineski. Yeah, and now this opens up a huge lead for Mineski. I mean, despite the kill lead being over to BRE, it was still Mineski dictating the way that the lanes went. They constantly had pushing lanes. They have CS and Power Proc. Every Gary. Gary. gets done towards the wall. Condom is there. That will be a kill for XDXP. He's on a rampage. Meanwhile, Hamas flashes in over that wall. He gets the kill on to R9. There's the absolute zero for the slow in the end. No one will die from XDXP. Trying to get away, trying to buy some time. Shotgun goes to Hamas. We're seeing. Oh, Abstone trying his best to help his team, but he's left alone. Jaime goes in with the arrow with the rush. That's going to be the charge. Landing onto Hamas. Jaime takes the kill. Yeah, TG can BRE chase him down. They're committing to this. There's the turret left by Exo. Ooh, that turret alone will let Abdong back off. Yeah, that was a very messy fight, which does end in a 1 for 2, I believe, because Ardai did go down in... Oh, actually, 2 for 2, because I think Gary was also taken out. But yeah, looking back at that fight, that was very messy for BRE. Unfortunately, though, the kill did go over to XDXP. You don't want all your kills going on to this movie because... Let's face it, Logan. Nunu is more of the utility champion. He isn't going to be the true carry. So generally, you'd want to have more gold onto Jaime, onto Arda, and not XDXP in this situation. I mean, when it comes to, yes, I agree, XDXP is more of the utility. He does have the challenging smite to try and deal an extra damage, but it won't really do much. It's more about kiting and protecting and peeling for her Arda. Yeah, now though, they have, they're in a very tough spot because Mineski were able to open up the map by taking out the mid lane, and bot, and the bot lane, lane. outer turrets of uh, BRE. And now what this does for Barsi X Rage Esports is now Mineski can invade their jungle, lay down vision in that area. And if BRE are face checking into a Kha'Zix and a Varus, that is incredibly scary. Just chain of corruption out of nowhere, you're locked down and. Hamish will just follow up with assassination damage. Now XDXP is in trouble. XDXP commits too much. Kind of Barrage is there for the slow. Abdong is in big trouble. He gets shredded by the Barrage. But Hamish will finish it off for that double kill. Arnai gets sewn up by the Divine. Jaime forced to fight alone. He gets popped by Axel. Lando trying to back off. He's dismounted. Arnai, can he get some kills here with his Bane? He will be forced to back off. Hamish with the Kha'Zix gets the kill. Leaps away from our die. Yeah, and at the end, that is a 4 for nothing in favor of Mineski and the tower as well. Salt in the wounds for BRN. But look at that. 
BR, they tried to clean up the fight. Everyone from Minescu were so low, but the targeting just wasn't there. They were focusing on different targets, but Minescu, they were on point. The moment that Hyman dashed in with his Spirit Rush, his HP bar just absolutely got deleted. Everyone from Minescu instantly bursting down the Ari. So I think that really turned around the fight. Just the target selection from both teams. Minescu was just more on point. And now looking back, it's actually XDXB getting caught out here, not respecting the aggression coming from Minescu. The Chain of Corruption does come out. And at this point, it's up to Hyman and Arder to clean up this fight. But the target selection just wasn't on the same target. The members of Minescu were able to reach the And look at Minescu. The instant Hyman dashes in, he's just dead. And not just that, the Emperor's Divine was really on par. When the fight broke out, Yuri actually had what it takes to clean up this fight. What happened there? Ardai got zoned by the Emperor's Divine. That wall alone stopped Ardai from going in. Jaime went in. Great damage from the Ari, but in the end, you need that vein to clean up the fight. Yeah, you definitely need that vein, and I think that's smart use of what strengths Mineski's compass. Previously, I mentioned Mineski, yeah, they don't have any true tank, but if the vein isn't hitting your comp, there's really nothing she can do. And just like that, the Azir doing what he does best, zoning out people as Lando and Kaigo are in a 2v. 2v1, Lando gets the charge, gets some shield, he gets dismounted, Hamas is there for the rescue, Lando's not going anywhere, Hamas is on a rampage! Yeah, I was gonna say 1v1 Vulcan, but the moment I saw Hamas there, I immediately knew that yun yung hindi fair na laban para kay Lando. That wasn't a fair 1, 1v1 situation. Generally, as a top laner, you'd want to just try and solo kill your lane, but Kaigu, he had a friend. So, very unfortunate for BR's top laner. And for Kaigo, he's kind of having a hard time uh, dealing with his Kled alone. Calling some help. Hamas was there. for the assist. And when it comes to the turret score, look at that. Five turrets to zero. BRE not having that much control despite the fact the early phases. They stood their ground, but in the end, it was Mineski just piling up their comp, just waiting for their spikes. Immediately removes five turrets in just a span of ten minutes. Yeah, I mean, like you mentioned, in the earlier phases, the gold was fairly even. BRE did have a kill lead, but just from the turrets being taken from Minesky and just the turnaround from them, it's already a 10k gold Look lead. Jaime coming from oh, Jaime, no. forced to flash over that wall into Hamas, not respecting the turret laid by the Zayr. Yeah, I mean, Jaime, he tried to go for a pick he on the Got hit Exo. by the turret twice. He got hit by the turret twice and he missed all his skill shots as well. So very unfortunate for BRE's mid laner right there. But yeah, going back to the score, it's Ooh, already a tension. Tension. This is not fun for BRE. Each face check, Mineski is there. Each face check that BRE does is disaster. No vision there. That will be Mineski taking down two members from BRE. Opens up the Baron. They cannot contest this. The Nunu is down. I think this will be the reward for that pickoff. And like I mentioned earlier, the moment that Mineski open up the map, BRE will be starved of vision. They will be forced to face check versus a Varus and a Kha'Zix. And it shows the effect right there. They're able to get these picks and they're rewarded with a large objective on the map. Now, Mineski, they're in an incredibly controlling position. Only 22 minutes into the game, it's going to be incredibly difficult for BRE to hold on. It's right now in the gold lead, it's 12,000, which is very difficult for BRE to bounce back. This is problem as one phases in the game because when you're talking about BRE, their comp relies on what? Ardai, right? As we said, well, it's not tank Mineski, but you saw that Emperor's Defy, that wall alone, zoning out Ardai, that's what you want to go for. That's what Mineski played, playing to their terrain. I mean, tara pag usapan natin Vulcan, di ba? PRE, they do have late game scaling. They have insurance once it gets to that point. They have the Kled, they have the Vein. I mean, they can run down these people. And if Ardai does get these items, they can be in a very good position to win. But unfortunately, if they want to get there, they have to deal with Hamas's Fed Kha'Zix. They need to deal with the Fed Varus, a gangplank that has been quietly farming away, already has two core items completed. It's just such a tough position to be in if you're BRE. Ooh, that hurts! Second to pull, so the Blasco will fling him back in. Immediately letting Afton get chalked down by the top catch. That is red flag for BRE. But that will be the sixth turn of the game taken down. That's going to be BRE engaging with the overdraw. 
charge and Abyssal Forge is there for the flag. Kind of Mirage is there for the slow. There's the save from PG. Now Mineski is pushing back Fury into their turrets. They won't have it. Hammer steps into the turrets. Opposite zero. Will it be enough for the slow? Just the slow. Hammer has the angel. He gets resurrected. Buys enough time for Axel to flood in the base for that double kill. Yeah, BRE, they were faced with a choice there. Do we deal with the four members of Mineski that are grouped up or do we go for Kaigo? But regardless of that choice, it would have been a bad choice because they are just that far behind Mineski. They're so confident to go for these plays. They have the Baron buff, they have the numbers advantage, two inhibitors to their name. Can they push for the game here, Vulcan, 24 minutes in? That's very difficult. That's a really tall order for BRE. That will be the first Nexus turn down. This are Baron empowered minions and Mineski are still healthy. There's the wall. Oh, Ardai gets chomped by the Nazir and the Gamblack. That Nexus is exposed. And Mineski is winning this fight, finishing off the game one. Yeah, I think this will spell the end of the game. Mineski at this point, they're patting their stats. They want more damage to their name. But just like that, it will be Mineski picking up game one versus BRE. But yeah, like we mentioned, Vulcan, I have to say, this is really surprises at this point. Mineski, one of the best teams in the PGS, just finishing the game 24 minutes versus BRE. When it comes to the first phases of the game, the relating phase itself, BRE was facing a huge challenge in the bot lane. They needed order to scale, but not just that. Let alone Mineski's draft, they lacked a decent attack, but just let that Azir do the zoning, the vein gets useless. But with that game one, that would be Mineski taking away one point from BRE in the best of three series. Yeah, I mean, credits to Mineski for playing the early game very, very well. It is their primary strength. Generally, their games go from Mineski just crushing lane and then transitioning that into advantages, into objectives and superior vision control. But you also have to talk about the situation that BRE are in. They were playing without their starting support, so that definitely changes their dynamics. So it was a very tough position to be in just from the start, looking at BRE. And when it comes to Bury, can they try and bounce back from that game one? We'll see after a short break. Moving on to game two. We have been the Shoutcasters. My name is Vulcan. With me was Chisto. See you after the short break for the continuation of the 2018 Backus Pro Gaming Series Spring Split. He commits too much. Kind of barrage is there for the slow. Abdong is in big trouble. He gets shredded by the barrage, but happens to finish it off for that double kill. Arnai gets sold up by the divine. Jaime forced to fight alone. He gets popped by Exo. Lando turns it back off. He's dismounted. Arnai, can he get some kills here with his babe? He the save from PG. Domineski is pushing back here into their turret. They won't have it. Hammer steps into the turret. Opposite zero. Will it be enough for the slow? Just the slow. Hammer has the angel. He gets resurrected. Buys enough time for Axel. That will be the first next to turn down. This are Baron and Baron minions. And Mineski are still healthy. There's the wall. Oh, Arzai gets chopped. Five. That is here in the gameplay. That is next to is exposed. I mean, SK is winning this fight, finishing off the game one. Yeah, I think this will spell the end of the game. Mineski at this point, they're patting their stats. They want more damage to their name. But just like that, it will be Mineski picking up game one versus BRE. But yeah, like you mentioned, 